Housing the family. Common types of houses. Jim and his parents are on their way back home from the tour. On the bus, he sees so many different structures that look like houses. Out of curiosity, Jim finds out from his mother why the houses look different from the ones back at home. Mom, look over there. Are those houses too? If you mean physical structures that provide shelter for the families and their properties, then yes, they are houses. They look funny. But still, protects the families from rain, cold, strong winds, wild animals, and thieves. People live in different structures depending on the availability of resources. The design and the materials used are influenced by the amount of money available. So they can't afford mabati or roofing tiles? Maybe, maybe not. But culture plays a role in the designing of these huts. Most of them are round, except for the Maasai Manyatas, which are cylindrical. The roofs are covered with reeds, grass, or palm leaves. And the walls are smeared with mud and cow dung. Good observation. Twigs are used to partition the huts into specific areas, such as sleeping, cooking, and storage areas, depending on family needs. Some even have a room for goats. What? They live with goats in the same house? Sounds weird, but at least ensures safety of the goats. Anyway, in some tribes, cooking and sleeping areas are well defined without partitioning the huts. While in some other communities, the sleeping and the cooking areas are not under the same roof. I think someday I should go to the village to take a closer look. It sounds like they're still living in the Stone Ages. Watch your mouth, my boy. Truth is, what we live in today as modern houses are basically an improvement of the traditional huts. City people have simply replaced the grass touches with the corrugated iron or tile, the mud walls with concrete or bricks, and the dirt floors with tiles or terrazzo. So, traditional huts are the foundation of modern houses. Now I see the point. Can I ask you another stupid question? Mm -hmm. I saw tiny holes on the walls of those huts. Are those windows or peepholes? That's a good question. Those are windows for ventilation and letting sunlight into the huts. But modern houses have windows made of wood, glass or metal. I got a question for you too. Mm. Does our house look the same as Paul's? Uh, no. Why? Because we live in a bungalow, they live in a marshonette. Still, others live in flats or apartments. So what makes them different? Is it their shapes? Slow down. Let's begin with our house. Hmm. It is a bungalow since it has all the rooms on one floor. Mm -hmm. Both city and rural families prefer them because they are inexpensive to construct and easy to expand. All right. And I guess they are good for families with small children and people who are physically challenged because you don't have to climb the stairs. Correct. And since bungalows are not shared with other families, they offer more privacy than apartments. But they take up a lot of space and are prone to insecurity since they are isolated. Hmm. So Paul's house is a mansionette because it has two floors. Uh, they have the dining room and the kitchen area on the ground floor, while the bedroom is upstairs. Exactly. This is a good example of a detached marshonette. Meaning? They do not share any walls with anyone. Other marshonettes are either attached, which means that they share common walls, or semi-detached, which means they share one common wall. These are mostly found in towns. I see. Are they any better than our bungalow? Yep. They save a lot of space since you have other rooms upstairs. They are also fairly safe from thieves because they are built close together. Thus, there is security in numbers. Plus, they don't waste any building materials since the units share common work. But the semi-detached machinettes are too close to one another to provide any privacy to the occupants. Is that right? 
Mm-hmm. And fire and cockroaches can easily spread from one housing unit to the next. In addition, it is not easy to extend or demolish the house whenever you want. I see. People living in very tall buildings in the city. Are those machinettes too? Nope. Those are called flats or apartments. Each floor has complete housing units. They are cheaper to build and take lesser space. But it is also so tiresome to climb the stairs, especially for old people. Besides, children could fall off the stairs and get hurt. Yeah, that's a disadvantage of flats. It is also difficult to keep shared space like staircases and corridors clean. And like in marionettes, pests can crawl from one unit to another. Also, you wouldn't fancy living in a flat if you have noisy neighbors. Yeah. After all this chat, I think I still prefer our bungalow, mom. East or west, home is best. Oh, here we are at last. Oh, I have missed home too. I'll go see Paul immediately and tell him all about the tour. Let's make lunch first, as you quickly recall what we have chatted about. Oh, I enjoyed this discussion. I remember everything. A house is a shelter that protects us from bad weather and wild animals. Houses are either traditional or modern. Modern houses are of three different types, namely machinettes, bungalows, and apartments. Our house is a bungalow since we have all the rooms on the same floor. Paul's family house is a machinette since they have all the rooms in both ground floor and upper floor. And finally, apartments are housing units built on Several floors in tall buildings. Great. Now go change. I need your help in the kitchen. If you promise to show me how to cook. Hurry up.